Object pooling is a simple system that can drastically improve performance of your game. And how it works? Normally, when you have, let's say, hundreds of enemies and you are constantly spawning them to the game and then destroying, it can generate a lot of garbage and slow your game. But when using object pooling, you are not actually destroying the objects, you are just setting them to inactive and then when you need to spawn the object again, you can just move it to the place you want and set it to active. And this method will work for all of the other objects, such as bullets, and everything else. We will just need to create one script. I will call it object pooling. I have just created a new namespace because I already have a class with the same name. We will begin by creating a new class which will be holding data about the pool so that we can have for example one pool for the enemies, one pool for the bullets, one pool for effects and so on. We will make this class system that's realizable so that we can also see it in its vector. Now each of the pools needs to have two properties. One will be the key, so name of the pool, which will be the same as the name of the object that you'll spawn. So it can be, for example, enemy. And then each pool data will be also holding a list of inactive game objects, so that we can later spawn the object based on the list. Or if we want to destroy some of the objects, we will put it back to the list of the inactive objects. Now we can have as many pools as we want and each of the pools will be holding these two data types. Now in our main class, object pooling, we'll add a list of the pool datas. I have made the list static so that we can easily access it in other classes. Now we can delete those two voids and we'll need just two voids, one will be for spawning the items and another one for returning the objects to pool, which will basically destroy it. Again, we want to have both of these functions static, so that we can easily access them in other classes. The return type of the first function is game object, because when we are spawning some object, we probably also want to have a reference for the object. And then we have pretty much the same parameters as you have in the instantiate function. So the prefab, position, parent, and I'm just setting the default value of the rotation to just empty quaternion. And the second function is just a void, which will return the object to pool. So we need to have a reference to the object. We'll begin with spawning the object. So when we first try to spawn it, we need to know if there is some existing pool which has the same name as the prefab. So we'll go through all of the pools, just get the key, and if it is equal to the prefab's name, we'll set this to the pool where we will be spawning the object. First, I create a reference for the pool in which we want to spawn the object. Then I go through all of the pool datas in our pools list. If the key of the current pool is equal to the name of the prefab that we want to spawn, which means that the pool is the correct, we set the pool to the pool that we are going through in the for each loop, we can break. And then if we didn't find any of the pools, which means that the pool is null, we need to create a new pool, so I'm setting the key to the name of the prefab, setting the inactive objects list, adding it to our list of all the pools, and setting the pool to the new pool that we have just created. After we have the pool in which we want to spawn the object, we need to know if there is some inactive object in the pool, and if there is not, we'll just need to instantiate the prefab. How do we get the spawnable object? It is pretty simple. From the pool, we just access the inactive objects list. And if the count is greater than zero, we can just set the spawnable object to the first object in the list. Then if the spawnable object is equal to null, we obviously need to instantiate a new one because there is no object that we could take from the list. Else, if there is some inactive object in the list, we can just set its position, rotation, parent, based on the 
parameters that we have defined in the function, remove it from the list of the inactive objects and set it to active. And at the end, we can just return the spawnable object. Just like this, we should be able to create a pool if there is any. Then we should be able to spawn the object, set its position, rotation and all of that stuff. In the void return object to pool, we first need to know to which pool we should return this object, which we'll do based on the name. So I will define a string for the key. But from the name of the object, we want to subtract the last seven characters, because when we first instantiate the object, it will not be named enemy, but it will also say enemy clone. Just like this. So to get the current key, we need to subtract these last characters and then we have the correct key and we can just go through all of the pools and compare the keys. I created a reference for the pool where we want to return this object. Then we are going through all of the pools from our list. We are checking if the key of the pool is the same as the key of the object. If this is true, we set the pool to the current pool and break from the loop. Next, we'll just check if the pool is not equal to now. If this is true, we'll return the object to this pool. So I'm adding the object to the pool of the inactive objects and then I am setting it to inactive. And this should be all. You can see the code is pretty simple and not too long and we'll be able to create as many pools for as many objects we want. Now, how do we implement the object pooling system, for example, to our enemy spawner script? Well, it is even simpler than you might have thought. So in this script, I have just a variable for the enemy prefab, enemy parent. I have a coroutine that is spawning enemy each three seconds. I just define some random spawn position and then I instantiate the enemy. The only line that we'll need to change is the instantiation. So we can delete the instantiate and because we have made the voids in the object pooling static, we can easily access them even here. So we can just type object pooling dot spawn game object. And we can just pass in the same parameters that we would be passing when instantiating the object. I have just reversed the order of these parameters. So we don't even need to be creating the quaternion and we can leave it just like that. Now we will get to returning the objects back to the pool. So I will open my enemy AI script. There's nothing too complicated. On update, we are just checking if the health is slower or equal to zero. If this is true, we don't want to be destroying the object. We can just again type object pooling dot return object to pool. Which object? It is this current object. And sometimes you might need to edit some other stuff in the code. For example, here, when the health is less or equal to zero, we will return it to pool, which means that then we again need to set the health to the max health. Otherwise, the object would be constantly returning to pool. Just like that. Under the enemy's parent, you can see that it is correctly spawning the enemies. And when I kill some of them, you can see that it is not destroying them. It is just setting them to inactive. And then when it is spawning a new one, it is not instantiating it, but it is just taking it from the list of the inactive objects. So this works correctly and we are just recycling the enemies, not instantiating and destroying them. Now let's try implementing the object pooling also for our bullets. So on the player, I have a script, bullet shoot, pretty simple script, just when we right click and we can shoot, it is triggering this coroutine. So here, instead of instantiating the bullet, we can just again type object pooling dot spawn game object and just reverse the parameters. Just like that. And for destroying of the bullet, this will be also pretty simple. We then just need to again call the void from the object pooling. Just one tiny mistake that I made when trying to return the new instantiated object, it is giving us error. That is just because in the object pooling script, when we need to instantiate the object, 
we also need to set the spawnable object to the instantiated object. Just like that. And now it is working even with the bullets. You can see under the bullets parent, they are getting turned off so that we can use them again. You can see that it was pretty easy to set up the object pooling and now you can easily add it to your other objects and improve performance of your game. I hope that this video was useful to you. If you have any questions, drop them down to the comments. Don't forget to like, subscribe and I will see you in next videos. Bye!